Welcome to episode 8 of the one podcast to eventually rule them all. This is a podcast about a group of friends getting together and giving their opinions, talking about video games, the world of professional wrestling, card games, real life, and anything else that might tickle our fancy. (sighs) As always, I am joined today by a wonderful group of individuals, starting off with the Indiana gentleman himself, Devin Bliss. Hey, boys and girls, I'm Devin, and I am protected this week by a river witch. (laughs) And his opponent. Coming to us from Shadowland, United States of America, he is the ginger beard man, gamer, (laughs) movie star, Twitch streamer himself, Cody. What movie am I in exactly? All that ass for. You know what? I would I would own the fuck out of that if I was. Not even gonna lie. But whatever. I am Cody, aka Gingerbeard Man Gamer on all platforms. Uh, you can catch my streams on Tuesdays and Fridays and YouTube videos on Wednesdays. Oh, and every other Sunday on Mr. Friendly Plays D D podcast. And his opponent still here, still kicking. Barely. His name is Caleb. Hello. <laughs> Love that cat. Caleb, follow me on Twitter. Caleb SXE forty four. I don't stream. I just yell at video games. And finally, the man that I'm surprised at is still here with all the money and revenue he is getting in from his <laughs> billion dollar contract from Twitch. It's friendly himself, Jake. And bro. What up? It's your boy. Guinea penis. <laughs> Little old dick and I'm back in this bitch. <laughs> you can catch uh, me over on twitch.tv forward slash friendly plays. Follow me at or friendly plays X. Sorry. You can follow me on YouTube at friendly plays. You can find me on Twitter at friendly plays. And also go to go to the BS BS now's Twitch and follow him. Apparently he just set up a green screen for something. No, new. I didn't. Oh shit! I, I got a, I got a chroma cam. Not I talking to you. Cam. We're done with you. Oh. Good, oh, goodbye. Sorry, my bad, my bad. <laughs> you you passed the torch. My bad. My bad. My bad. Well, I was fucking around with the green screen stuff earlier. That's why I was right. talking. Oh, it's hard to know when snow starts talking in third person. <laughs> and finally, I am the B Snow. <sighs> Hello. Um, why do I feel like you just did your entrance? To the king. <laughs> Carry on my okay. Oh, no. Waywards. All right. Um, pretty short. Peace when you are done. They are weary here to rest. That just doesn't get an intro. Don't you cry no more. Ow. All right. <laughs> we just got DMCA'd. And anyways, um, we got a few oh, topics we're gonna talk about today. We got um. Some celebrity streamers we're going to, you know, talk about. We're going to talk about some games we can erase from our memories and, you know, play again. We might talk about the season fin- episodes and all that finale of Supernatural. <laughs> and anything else we might, you know, dive into. But first, do you know Top Turda? Oh, God. Do you? It. I may. I may, but I'm um, so mate. First up, as a would you rather be single for a year, which includes not dating, or go on bad dates for a year straight? Yo, give me, let me be single. What, <laughs> what, what do the bad dates consist of? <coughs> I don't know. Maybe she turns out to be uh, a dude. A, yeah. All right. Well, maybe she cooks her steak well done i don't know (laughs) maybe she puts ketchup on everything i knew it was fucking coming (laughs) maybe she hates maybe she hates cover songs i don't know (laughs) yep those are two things i'm not a fan of (laughs) maybe she loves animal crossing you know i don't know i'd be i'd rather be single for a year yeah single for a year so i've been single (laughs) for so you don't have a choice you don't have an (laughs) option (laughs) So, I think I'd like to try out the bad dates. 
Uh, I, yeah, I'd probably just do the single for a year. I like that's fine. I don't care. Absolutely. All right, moving on. What Guinness World Record do you think you could break in the future? Oh. Well, I'd have to know the what the records were. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there's one I could break. Um, if I tried hard enough. Oh God. I bet I could chew a piece of gum the longest. That's disgusting. Single piece of gum? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't gum. do that. I could probably hold the longest burp. I don't know. I'm pretty I good at know. burping. Devin, remember last time I burped? <laughs> 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 I haven't burped since then. <laughs> that, I... was the, that was the wildest shit I've ever heard in my life. I thought, I didn't. Oh my fucking god! Yeah, you really should have heard it. I was like a beluga whale. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking. God. Um, I could maybe go like consecutive days watching the same thing. I'm sure that's a record somewhere. I'm yeah, and I'm. It's probably a pretty hefty record. <laughs> probably, <laughs> but like I could throw on Top Gun and watch that shit all day every day. I wonder if I could like do the most ollies. Cause I don't, yeah. I don't miss Ollie's, bro. I'd be landing them, hmm. bro. Lucky, <laughs> uh, I I can I land Ollie's too. What the fuck? You literally posted on Instagram you landing an Ollie. That was the first one I ever did. I know Doesn't, it was great. Doesn't Rob Deerdeck hold that record? Probably. Most, he has like a, a minute or something. He has a bunch of weird records. He had the whole episode they were filming. Right yep. There. I miss that show. Interesting. Hmm. What do you think, Snow? I'd probably, I don't know, I could probably eat the most rolls of sushi. Ooh. You could, you could yeah. probably stay the most silent for the longest. That's, I don't that's know, I'm true. pretty good at that. <laughs> probably eat the most wings at once. And Snow nah, can definitely I eat the most f- wings. I was going to say, I feel like Snow would do that. I've never seen anybody, I mean, 100% honest, never seen anybody eat more wings than Snow. I so really haven't. That's the most consecutive skateboard alleys is 302. Oof. Jesus. I bet I could do that. I mean, that yeah. seems like I don't know how tired I would get, but I feel like we could try and make that happen. I feel like my legs would fall off, though. <laughs> yeah. Is there, a, is there a requirement for height? I doubt it. Because, I mean, if you, just have to, if you just have to get the wheels off, I mean, that seems like a manageable record. I, th- I think I could do that, to be honest. Let's go for it. Make you more millions of dollars. Can you ollie yet, Caleb? Nope. He's I, haven't skated, I haven't skated since August. <laughs> you haven't skated so since you were at my house? Uh, yeah, I skated a few more times after that. and You retired. Life got, life got in the way. Quit life and start skating again, bud. Come on. Deal. <laughs> All right. I feel like we just got a little bit closer with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Snow. I bet if Snow got on a skateboard, he'd just automatically be laser flipping <laughs> and shit. <laughs> <laughs> automatically be good. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't skateboarded I just, since I broke my ankle skateboarding, so. Yeah, I did that I, once. I, 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 tried, <laughs> broke your I tried to get him to walk off the base. Snow doesn't want to play Fuck with us. Off. What do you mean? I said, hey, you should get into skating with us. And you said, I'm not driving a fucking hour to skate. You never said that. Get a skateboard with me. If you had said that, I'd be like, all right, cool. <laughs> I'll get my uh, Naruto. Under oh, uh, picture on it or whatever. Oh god. Under picture. You mean the <laughs> back? <laughs> Get a skateboard. Learn to skate with me. But it's, you got it's six winter. months to winter. It's winter. So I'll be snowboarding. I'll get he's, my he's... I'll get my Naruto picture on my snowboard. How's that? <laughs> Snow's wintering in Caramoran right now. <laughs> oh my fucking god. All right. Speaking of winter, um Wish two other people got that joke. <laughs> Speaking of winter, um the series finale of Supernatural just ah! ended. <laughs> Cody, you might want to mute yourself. Mute yourself. <laughs> or mute, mute us. Deafen. If you don't want to get spoiled. But at this point, it's it's been a couple weeks. It's been a little bit. It's been a few days. Yeah. You should have seen it by now. When you get to there. You're gonna get spoiled. It's gonna be spoiled. <laughs> right. Gonna... Oh my god. So, after 15 seasons, 15 years. 
Okay. 327 so is- episodes. What do we want to talk about first of Supernatural? I just, firstly, this show has been going on for over half of my life. Same, same. So it holds a very special place in my heart. I've loved Supernatural the whole time. I've rewatched Supernatural more times than I can count. Specifically season five. I've seen that. I, I literally can't even count. Many. Season five is so good. Bro, that's yes. Mm. I mean, it's like a ten-year-old spoiler, but no, don't right. don't don't talk about it because Cody's right here. We can talk spoiler ending. Well, that'll be like I, I a have, year before he gets to it. I have a question because I didn't watch it. I haven't watched since uh, the president was possessed or something. And had, <laughs> yeah, had that kid oh. or whatever. Yeah, that was the last time I. Was that, that's only a few seasons ago, really. Yeah, I'm only like two or three seasons behind or yeah. whatever. But I have a question for you guys with you guys talking about the finale. Mm-hmm. Were you happy with it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, th- okay. What I saw on the internet. As well, to, okay, as so to I, why... just, I just want to hear you say yes or no, because I want to ask. Okay. I, you, I, I saw what you saw, so I want to ask about it. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I get it. And I, okay, obviously. I think we all would have been happy with more, but because I, I, of COVID and all that, I'm still very happy with the ending. I think the ending was great. I think Castiel's ending was amazing. Same. And so, just okay, go on with whatever else you wanted to ask. I was just going to say, I think that the people, the reason that people are angry is the same reason that people are angry about anything else. They, they just can't accept happiness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. The ending... Yeah. Uh, Compare it to the ending of like the Game of Thrones, or that was that bad, or Dexter. <laughs> yeah, Dexter was bad. Like, or Soul Eater for anime fans. N- shut up, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Oh. Yeah. The ending was trash compared to episodes like that. It was absolutely great. Because okay, so like I said, I haven't seen it. But you guys were saying it was amazing. Like angry about it is like people were angry because they wanted Castiel to confess his love to Dean yep. and be in heaven with Dean, and they live eternally happy because they're in love with each other. But when you think Castiel is coming, Sam comes, and it's just the brothers in heaven together on the car or whatever. Well, that's that's what I've heard. But people thing- are so pissed because. Dean and Castiel didn't end up together. Okay. It started yeah. out as Sam and Dean, and it ends at Sam and Dean. Yes, right. Sam, the ending. They were wearing the same clothes they wore in episode one. Okay, and I saw that too. Which and was sec- awesome. secondly, there is not a fucking moment, and I've seen every Supernatural episode many more, more than once. There was not a moment in time during that ending where I was like, "This is going to be Castiel instead of Sam rolling up." Who that, the fuck, who the fuck that, thought that? Not like, only why? that. But of in all of Supernatural, like they might have, might have hinted at it. I, but in what world does Dean love Castiel in any way more than a brother? Yeah, I was I was gonna get there after this. So, firstly, my okay, my thing. Uh, angels, not into love really at all. The whole fucking show, just doing their thing. Okay, but I think, and I don't know because I didn't see this, but I guess. Uh, Misha Collins was like, yeah, Castile's bi or whatever, which is fine. Okay, who cares? But the entire show, Dean always out just fucking women the <laughs> whole show. Like, I, I, there's nothing about Dean that I was like, he could possibly be gay. So I, I just, I don't understand being like, I need these two guys to be fucking at the end of Supernatural and be in love. If they were, whatever. I don't care. But cool, like, but- I just don't get why people were like, that needs to happen. Because, because they didn't get the fan service that they wanted, and that's it. That's, I, I, I don't understand how that is the fan service you want over what happened. Okay, so Sam, or not Sam, uh, Castiel still professed his love for Dean, but it just wasn't It wasn't like that. But he was like, he said, Dean, yep. I, love, I love you so much. And that was, that was his happy moment. And that right. shit is what took him away, and that saved the fucking world. 
So <laughs> what do you want? But listen, listen. Did you did you te- did you see the tease of a kiss oh, there before he went away? Because <laughs> there was a there was a kiss tease. They went I, to lean into each other, and then the darkness opened and swallowed up Cass. No, I didn't. I didn't see that. <laughs> Go though. back and rewatch that episode because they're like this. <laughs> and then darkness takes. But see, if I would have seen that, I probably would have been like, maybe they're they're probably going in for a hug because that's right. what I would do. I'd be like, like I hugged my dad today on at the at Thanksgiving dinner. He was leaving. I hugged my dad. Sure, we moved forward. With our lips close, <laughs> but I was still going in for a hug. And so I don't that shit. I just don't listen, understand it. You can kiss your best friends, and it's fine. I've literally done it. Same. So, <laughs> so here's all so, the other thing too. Um, people thought that the ending should have been the episode before with um, God being killed and everything. No. I'm no. I'm so glad that, it wasn't. That's why p- some of the people were upset as well. I am so glad that wasn't the end. It was I a really good episode, did. but it really but didn't do much for me. The, yeah, the thing about that episode is I was not emotional for that episode. No. Like so, so Castiel, what happens to him happens, and I'm fucking like I'm I'm not distraught, but I'm super emotional about it because that whole monologue he had right there with Dean, with, fantastic, uh, with Billy banging on the door. Like it got me, and it got me fucking good. But then the, the next episode was like, okay, it's a chill out episode. the The shine is over. We're gonna hit the heat, and then the next episode we're going into the fucking hope, and then we're taking it home. And that's literally what they did. Right. It was it was a classic storytelling. So, and the people that are like, well, why did it have to happen the way it happened? What else did you expect? First of all. God is not on their side anymore. They don't have a God watching out for them, so they can die at any hunt, well, no matter well, what happens. Okay. Yeah, I, Dean, I understand. They went on like an uh, like a super like normal hunt, and then Dean just gets unlucky because God died, so he gets unlucky and he dies. Right. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that hero's luck anymore. And or, I know pe- people are gonna people are like, well, Jack could have fucking saved him, but Jack immediately, as soon as he got the powers, was like, I'm hands off, boys. Yep. And so I get it. And then I also like the whole whole time I watched Supernatural, if they didn't survive to the end, I always like felt that that's the way it was going to go. Right. Because the whole time Dean's like, Sammy, I want you to go on and live a real life. This is how he said it more than once. He's this is how I die right here. Well, well, yeah, okay. Even in season three, I'm already getting to where he's like, you go live. He I'm literally crazy. he already he already died in what fucking. Uh, <laughs> right. Cody's watching and he did the same thing. He's like, this is how I die. Yeah. Like, I'm, he's like, I'm training you to be me because someone has to be, you can't live how you are right now. Oh my now, God. So. And then like, then I'm, I'm just thinking about it because, okay. Remember, I don't remember what episode it is, but they're going through like, uh, it's not different times or whatever. I don't remember how exactly it happens, but remember the episode opens up and Sam gets shot in the chest with that shotgun. With the, the hunters running on him. Yep, 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 yep. And so so Sam gets shot, and then Dean just lifts up, and he's like, well, fuck it, you better shoot me too, because if you don't, I will fucking kill you. So they shoot they shoot Dean. Yep. Like, you you know the whole time. Dean's like, I, you know, I like, it's my brother or nothing. And the reason, I think so. the reason that it makes sense for, if it would have been Rose reversed and Sam would have been the one to, to bite the bullet first. I don't. I, I don't think Dean would have been able to go on and live that happy. No, I don't. No, he wouldn't have. The whole like the whole show sets up for him not being able to do that, in my opinion. And right. also, the fucking dude. Oh my fucking god, I'm getting goosebumps because. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just sitting there, and he's just like, "Sammy, tell me it's okay. Just uh, fucking tell uh, me." Oh, uh, bro, dude, uh. dude, and then oh my god, and. And then Sammy on his deathbed, oh, and his dude. arm comes in. I wasn't even getting there yet. I was like, they Bruh. put their they put their foreheads together, and then it pans to the fucking left side of Dean or whatever, and that one tear rolls down. And we close his eye. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> <laughs> Whoo, dude. All right. That's just uh, that show's just fucking. It's perfect, man. I got really one more thing I got to talk about with that show. <clears throat> it's about that episode in particular. Sam didn't stop hunting ever. If you look, if you go back and watch it, I don't know if Devin saw this or Snow saw this, but Sam's son had the tattoo. Right. Oh, I definitely saw it. And so Sam was still hunting. 
So are we going to suppose that he married Eileen too? I would have to imagine. It was a brunette girl. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell who was in the background, but I tried to figure it out. So uh, who whose uh, death got them uh, got them the more worst? Was it Dean or so, was it Sam? Oh, dude, it was it was definitely Dean for me. Like what? I was. It was Sam for me. Yeah, definitely Sam. Dean's. I don't know, cause like I feel like Dean should have hurt me more than it did. <laughs> Dean fucked me up because and... like it was it was out of nowhere. Yeah, but Sam's. Like, you knew it was going to happen. Right, but Sam was just like, you know it's going to happen, and this is what's going to happen, but I think it was the thought of, okay, now they can be together again. That really fucking got my tears going. So, I don't... Sam's may not have been as impactful to me, because, like, everything they were saying to each other when Dean was about to go, I was like, it was just getting me, and I knew he was going to die, and I was super... I was fucking wrecked, boys. I was messed up about it. And so oh, yeah. I was, by the time we made it to Sam, like the 30 minutes it took to get to <laughs> Sam dying, I was still fucked up. So, <laughs> so that's probably why that wasn't as, uh, you know, hard on me. I mean, it still sucked because I just, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was prepared for the ending, but I was not prepared for the ending. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I knew it was coming, but it still it hit me so hard. Well, speaking of endings, with this one being so good, could you write a better ending? <clears throat> now, is there, I, is there something that you wish would have happened that would have made the ending better? Well, everybody would have came back in heaven with them. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. About it. To see like John and Mary, uh, John and Mary, and yeah, Cass. and that's I wanted to see Cass too. I really wanted to see Cass. even seeing Joe and. Uh... Yeah, I fucking one. Joe. Joe would have been amazing. Joe and Ellen. Yeah, yeah. If we could have seen them, that would have been really cool. It's really like a cast reunite at the yeah, final, or like yeah, the final that, scene. That's the only thing that would have made it better because I think they were at Ash's bar already. Yeah, they're at they're yeah. at uh, the Roadhouse. So I mean, that's that's literally the only thing. And I like kept like, of... I kept waiting because when he got into when he got into the Impala, I was like. Is Joe gonna come out? Is Joe? Gonna, you know what I mean? Like I was excited to see Joe, and then I was like, "Oh wait, there's COVID, so Joe's what probably I, gonna be there." What I would like to see in the future is like who all was supposed to be there, but because of COVID, we're not there. Like a deleted scenes type episode, or a no, reshoot? not necessarily a reshoot would be fine. That'd be cool with that, but just like you know, written down on paper from like right a crypt key or something. Well, they're not. Did you denying like a a reboot or whatever? They're not. And did you see that uh, Jensen actually went and opened up his own studio? Yeah, I saw that on Twitter, and a lot of fucking <sighs> the people were talking about it's because he wants to reshoot the fight finale of Supernatural. Hey, if he resets, <laughs> okay. okay. Listen, Feel free. I'm gonna be there for it because I love him and I love Supernatural, but I don't right. think it's necessary. No, I don't like, think I, so either. I uh, just fucking be happy with what we got, really. I agree. I agree. This is one of the. I tell you, I I don't want to be that emotional again. I do (laughs) not want to be that emotional about a show again. See, I I feel like I take shows at face value now because, like, everybody's really upset about the Game of Thrones ending, right? I wasn't. Everything that happened made sense to me. See, and And that's what I was trying to, like, hint at because, like, you guys obviously love this ending, but a lot of shows have terrible finales. Where you go, okay, this ending would have been better. You know? <clears throat> Game of Thrones, Dexter. Breaking right. Bad was good. True, True Blood. Th- just like shows like that. Like, okay, these endings could have been so much better. But like, Game of Thrones, obviously, there was so much more they could have done. But They could have done a lot more, more. yeah. My, now, I just thought of something that kind of makes sense to me. I think the reason that people bitch and can't complain about endings so badly... Aside from like Dexter's, because that one was just straight up terrible. But they're coming back um, with more. Is yeah, they because are. they they are sad that the show's over, so they have to have a reason to bitch about something. Because they can't bitch about the show. I mean, so they bitch about the ending because they wanted more. I, I guess. But... Well, everyone always has this idea of how it's going to end, and then when it doesn't end the way they want it, like people get so pissed off right. because um, Freak Boy. Once upon a time, when Dexter was getting ready to end, he goes, the coolest ending for Dexter would be the final episode. It pans out like where he stares in the camera or whatever. It pans out and he's sitting in a courtroom and he's telling his entire life story 
because he's getting ready to put be put on like death row or whatever. And like the entire series of Dexter is just him sitting at the courtroom telling his story. That and, then cool, I, and then I thought in the last season where he taught that kid to be like him, that this kid kills Dexter because Dexter's a bad guy and it goes against the moral code. And this kid kills Dexter and you could technically do like a spinoff of this kid being like the new Dexter. But there was just so many different endings that people could come well, up you with. Never that know that it's coming so back. much better. It is coming back. But I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like the whole last season at all. I did the, not like the it. The first all. like the first half of it was awesome where he was teaching that kid to be him. And like you couldn't find out like who the brain surgeon was, and then everything just got real sloppy real fast. Yeah, I just I wouldn't that whole last season. Well, they took the me. bitch way out on that. It was annoying. There's a, a Game of Thrones spinoff that got announced. Supposedly, it's supposed no, it's, to be by the it, guys that. Uh, it's not supposedly. It's already like in, in progress. Oh really? Yeah, it's called House of Dragon. House of the Dragon. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Uh, Sounds like, like the Targaryen movie. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be like the Targaryens' like backstory. Yeah, which I think will be pretty cool. I never watched Game of Thrones. HBO I, straight. I haven't down. either. Weren't the brothers supposed to be doing a Star Wars series that never went to fruition? Yeah. That's why they yeah. ended Game of Thrones. I, I think yeah. they got kicked off of it. Yeah, they got kicked off it because how bad the last season of Game of Thrones was for everybody. Oh, shit, really? <laughs> yeah. They definitely got kicked off of it. I don't know if that's, I was why, say, they that's why. They rushed Game of Thrones because they wanted to jump into Star Wars, and then I knew that they weren't doing Star Wars. Yeah, if they would have taken the time to actually you know, make Game of Thrones Season 7 or whatever... Well, Against HBO Star straight up said, hey, we can give you two more seasons. They said, nah, we'll do it in one. We want eight episodes. They're like, yo, you can do 13. And they go, nah, dude, we're doing it in eight. Yeah. The, and the, everything they built up to literally just got like a half an episode. Oh, yep. this big battle that you are wanting, half an episode. Oh, this White Walker, Jon Snow confrontation that you've all been wanting, 20 minutes. So to be fair, devil's advocate here. The only part about that episode, the the war, the war or whatever, the only part about that episode that I didn't like was how dark it was. I like, knew you were gonna say that. Shit. That was everyone's complaint was how dark that episode was. But like Liana, when she goes and kills that fucking troll, dude, that shit was fucking dope. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, that shit was dope. To- Little girl, Devin, I'm Devin <clears throat> Cody. I'm gonna paint you a picture, right? Okay, right, paint it. About about twelve years old. <clears throat> little ass girl who's like the 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 leader of her house now because the rest of her family's dead is mm-hmm. in this battle against the undead right a troll comes in and she's like all right fuck it i'm gonna go sicko mode <laughs> starts fighting the troll ends up in the troll's grasp like beginning held like this and she fucking like i don't remember what she does to kill it but she i think she shoves her sword through his eye she puts a wand she's... in his nose puts the yeah. wand in his nose. oh <laughs> wait <laughs> that's harry potter <laughs> <laughs> so she kills this she kills this troll and it's her last dying thing she fu- died killing this fucking giant troll and it was dope yeah. okay but like Arya killing the white or the the white walker like everybody was pissed about that like that makes sense to me cause like who oh else could have done it she was the only one that was trained to do it that made me and pop. then Bran and then Bran being announced the king I didn't like it, but it made sense. Yeah. Brand the Broken. Can't you just be like Brand the, the right. Brand Stark? Brand the Broken. Isn't that who wrote Dracula? Brand, Brand the Last of His Kind. Brand the Broken. <laughs> oh, hail the King. He's like, all right, cool. I guess I'll do it. But like, even then, <laughs> even Brand then fans, like, even fans came up with a better ending for Game of Thrones where like everyone speculated that Bran actually caused the entire series of events of Game of Thrones because um, they were saying with him being able to like have his the, visions, the three eyed Raven caused it and then made it and then he became brand. So I mean, right. So when yeah. he could talk to people in his visions, um, people had the theory that he was actually whispering in the King's ear to like help him prevent the ideas of Game of Thrones, which ended up turning the King mad because he heard the whispers and then uh, creates the mad king which then in turn spirals into game of thrones. Right. I mean that's that's actually a cool theory. 
And that's what everybody thought was going to happen, and it went absolutely nowhere. I think that if... I think that if, A, the last book was out, and people saw that the same thing happened in the book that happened in the show, I don't think people would bitch as much, because then it shows that George R. R. Martin had the exact same idea. You know what I mean? Right. And then, two, if D&D would have just fucking taken the time that they were offered to... Because Game of Thrones for Devin and Cody, who's never seen it before, it's a long game. Everything in that show for the first, like, five seasons is long. It's a slow build. It's a slow build. Nothing really happens episode to episode, aside from... Last power. season, they were like, how do you like last... everything in two episodes? Right. The last two episodes was like, boom, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. It used to take three episodes for somebody to go from one place to another. Okay. And now it's like, okay, you were going to fight the White Walkers this episode, and then the next episode, you're fighting the Queen, which is a month's ride. You know what I mean? Like, okay. if they were so, the yeah, they they Loaded literally just tried to wrap up basically eight different storylines in two episodes. Yep. So, in the very first episode of Game of Thrones, you get these White Walkers. No one knows what the hell they are. It's insane. The entire Game of Thrones series builds up to this big ass battle between the living and the dead. They're trying to unite all the kingdoms, living versus dead. Holy shit, we got to do it. They gave that whole battle one hour. One fucking hour, and like Jacob said, the shots in that show were so dark, you couldn't even see what the fuck was going on in that sh- battle anyway. So they took this entire series battle and killed it in one hour. <sighs> yep. And it was so, like, because the Night King was a fucking badass villain, too. Right. And they made him a bitch. That kind of seems to be... Tender. But yo, Theon's death was kind of dope. Theon had such a story arc for him. Because I look at those things, too, because there's a lot of good story arcs that happened, even in the last season. Battle of the Bastards is my favorite season. Yeah, it's fucking good, too. Like, like, the Hound in the Mountain, that was a good-ass ending for both of them. Yeah. Because there there were bright spots. It was just, like, overall, it wasn't executed the best. Right. They just rushed it. That's all it was. Yep. Yep. So Fortune. overall, overall big win for Supernatural. We'll miss you. Carry on. We will miss My you Lord. forever. I'll I'll miss you in like a year and a half when I finally finish the other twelve seasons. <laughs> Bruh, Cody, when you fucking start watching the final episode, I need I need picture photo updates of you watching. Cody, movie. I want to get I want to be tape yourself crying. I want to be able to stream it. I will stream the reaction of me watching the final episode. Oh, yeah. We'll watch in Discord together. All of yeah. Us. There yeah. you go. Speaking of streaming I'll be like, it, why? Speaking of streaming it, Cody, um, what about celebrities that like to stream it? Yeah, so <laughs> so this, this is coming out on Monday, more than likely, unless Brad fucks up again. Um You hear that, oh, Brad? <laughs> so the Friday after Thanksgiving was another AOC Twitch stream where oh, she did was she again? Manga. Yep, she did with like Hassan Abi. Um I know I'm gonna fuck up his name, but it's like Hail Biden. Jam, Jamit, Jam, something like that. Jamit, something like that. Another the Canadian like, yeah, uh, Democrat leader and all that. Ooh, and it kind of got me thinking like, how like celebrities are starting to kind of dabble more into the like you have you know Rudy Gobert, you have fucking Terry Crews used to be a pretty decent sized streamer. Like all these people kind of using it as a platform to get out the stuff that they're doing while also having fun with like actually connecting with fans that like, especially right now you can't exactly go do meet and greets. Right. So, you know, you got T-Pain that's doing live concerts for people. Same with a soldier oh, boy T-Pain. was, but um, Snoop Dogg does streams every now you and then. know me. <laughs> Comic music, happy boy. But fucking rampage Jackson used to do a lot of Twitch streaming. Like former he has TNA a superstar. <laughs> yeah, you got all kinds of WWE people that are streaming. You get like Rusev, Paige, uh, Ember Moon. First of all, first of all. <laughs> oh, God. First of all, his name is Miro. Who? Rusev. Just cut it. It says Rusev. Sorry. Just go, go That's on, Cody. Who it says to me. My bad. Carry but, on. Uh, you know, you got all these big streamers or big people that are kind of using it as a as a separate platform. And then you have a lot of musicians that are 
Darude is still doing concerts. Dead Mouse is still doing concerts. Fucking Darude! Yeah, he's still doing it over, like regularly. You got Brendan Urie from Panic at the Disco that's doing Fortnite streams and shit like that. Skrillex had a stream once. Ronnie Rocky. <laughs> like Steve Aoki, still a regular streamer. And Rocky. he even he still plays fucking Modern Warfare and shit like that. So like I don't I know. It's cool. Ronnie to... Rocky troll fans on Modern Warfare. <laughs> Dude, he's so good too. Like, I was like, all right, he's probably not that good at duty. He is good at duty. Did you see? Fucking, I think it was um, Odell Beckham Jr. was gonna. He was streaming some Warzone, fucking sniping people out of helicopters, snow style. <laughs> what? So I'm like, surprised that it didn't catch on sooner. Honestly, I think yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, and I, it makes me it's wonder. Such an it, untapped market. And it makes me wonder if stuff like COVID really kicked it up where their PR people were like, well, you like playing a video games. Why don't you just like stream it? It would have to. Cause, like, so here's my thought process, right? Uh, you can make just as much money on Twitch, if not more money on Twitch, than you can filming a movie for 30 days or um, 60, yeah. 60 days or whatever. Yeah. And you're just streaming for like and you're uh, just three hours a day. Right. Playing some video games. Like, yeah. to me it's an untapped market because like uh, nobody does it yet. Right. And the, the moment people start doing it and taking it seriously, the moment an actor retires from acting and starts t- streaming on Twitch full time, it's going to open up a whole new world for streaming. Oh, for yeah. celebrities, I think like cool. logic, for example, who basically was like, all right, I'm done making music now. And then became a full time or was going to become a full time content creator. I don't think he did. Yeah. I don't think he does as much anymore, but well, and like some of the cool shit that I've seen is there are the voice actors that will go play the game that they're in and do it in the voice of the character that they played and jump into random lobbies with people as He's their like, character. Uh, the game. guy that played no. uh, Jin from <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima did that. Did yeah. he really? Yeah. yeah, he played the uh, game as Jin. That's dope. <laughs> There's a few people from Overwatch that go and do it, that they'll play their characters and same with um, Apex. Apex. Yeah. The guy that I think it's Mirage. The guy that plays Mirage jumped yeah. in when was just like starting to talk to people, and they're like, "Dude, you sound so much like him." And him he's and like, nah. "Pathfinder voiceover guy." Yeah. So like doing shit like that would just be so cool. Could you imagine jumping into a random lobby of like Apex and just playing with the dude that made the character? The the guy that played Ghost in Modern Warfare, he jumped into a Warzone lobby and was talking as Ghost. Yeah. Like that shit's just cool as hell. So I don't know. It's, I think, like you said, having once somebody starts tapping more into that market, it's going to explode. Oh yeah, but and it's going to be good for not only the so, real quick. It's going to be good for not only the celebrities, but for Twitch too. Because the moment, the moment that fucking like, I don't, know, I don't think of somebody famous that uh, who the fuck plays uh, Geralt? The fuck's his name? Oh, Henry Cavill. No, my Henry Cavill was like, I'm going to go stream The Witcher 3 on Twitch and post it on his Twitter. Oh, yeah. That's not only going to bring... He's not. He's going to get a shit ton of people there, but it's going to put more eyes on the platform as well. Yep. Well, that kind of goes, goes into my question. So I was, yeah. I was trying to play devil's advocate on this. So, sure, the eyes come with the celebrities, but do you think having celebrities on the platform also makes it very hard for smaller streamers to get noticed because if you're not famous, they don't care about you. No, because no, I don't, you have your so. own little communities to yourself. Yeah. You have, okay. a, you have your own little communities to yourself. B, there's already people out there that are getting 10, 20, 30 million or 30,000 people to stream. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not, that's not going to change anything for me. No. And I, I think they're, there's still going to be separate worlds, which I think is one of the cool things about Twitch is there's literally no cap to how many people can be on the site at one time or app or whatever you're using. But like for, for example, AOC, when she did her first stream, she had like 300,000 people watching her stream. Yep. I streamed, I streamed that same night and I had probably more people that night than I did when AOC was streaming. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I just wasn't exactly sure how Twitch worked, so gotcha. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it's like you just got buried at that point. Like, no. so Cody, Cody goes on and he tries to stream Magic, but Duke Reed gets on and he streams Magic. Well, 
Cody no longer exists because Duke Reed is playing. Reed Duke. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> I mean, I guess it kind of that, so, that would be kind of like one of those I don't I don't know. If you're I, in the same exact market, maybe just because he's going to have sponsors and stuff that are like fronting the name for him, or he's going to be on like Channel Fireball that he is. So right. I mean, he's going to have the support from them. But like, if Keanu Reeves starts streaming Cyberpunk whenever that actually comes out, and like Jacob decides he's going to stream Cyberpunk, well, they're going to be two different worlds. Like, people are going to be there for Keanu, but then Jacob's still going to have the community that he built. And their friends and the friends that they go and tell, like, "Hey, go watch Friendly Plays." Like, it's going to be two separate worlds. And I, I even even piggybacking onto that, I don't think it's going to ch- it would change that much because like, I bring up AOC again because she's like the only one that I know that has really started to tap into the market as well. As she has, yeah. The 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 people she was playing with was still streaming, and they were they still did fine. Yep. Well, that's so, good. I mean that's good. So yeah. Plus, I there's just don't... there's also people that. Or like, I'd rather support smaller streamers than these big people because they already right. have the money. And these right, and that's are what still I was afraid of. It's like the celebrities coming in and just taking over the platform, and then it making it impossible for these smaller streamer groups to. It's already thrive. impossible. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think it's pretty awesome to see, and like. I know AOC caught a lot of backlash because people are like, oh, well, why aren't you fixing things instead of blah, blah, blah. Well, it, you can't at two in the morning for one. And for another thing, like, you got to have a real life, too. You know, you can't She's be, not allowed to have a day off. Right. Like when she first started doing it, people are like, glad you're playing games instead of trying to fix our country. Like, well, that's not her job to begin with. She's not the president of the United States. No. But hail Biden. <laughs> hail Biden. <laughs> If you can have fun and show like appeal to more of the people around our age that see something like that and it's like, okay, that's cool as fuck. Like that's a politician that I would actually maybe listen to because she's playing games, but then also answering questions and talking about what she does in her actual like job. And she didn't really do all that much of that either. Like, did no. you watch any of her stream? Mm-hmm. Most of her stream was just like, hey, go out and vote. She didn't say who to vote for, really. Exactly. She just said, hey, go vote. And like yeah. What is wrong with that? Yeah, and I also exactly. remember uh, Dr. Lupo was streaming with her, and some guy in his chat was like, I'm not watching you ever again because you're streaming with uh, AOC. <laughs> Dude, and Lupo's he ran. went off on him. He did. Which was Lupo hilarious. Was wild in that dude. Lupo's rant was so good about that, though. And, like, I think that's the thing, is it does normalize more of the we should be allowed to talk politics and not get in a fight about it. Right. Yeah. But, you know, people are so up in arms lately. And I maybe COVID's a part of it. They're just stressed out from not being able to do what they want to do. But there's just been so much where, like, certain people I can't even talk to anymore because, oh, well, you like Biden, then I don't want anything to do with you, you piece of trash. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, yep. cool. Well, bye. Yeah, I'm Fucking apparently not missing much anyway. Fucking Von Bonner told me that, or posted on his uh, Snapchat, that if you are a liberal, then... He will never forgive you or some shit, or that we're not that you're not friends anymore. Friend, yeah. So okay. I was like, I was like, wow, I thought we were friends, and he was like, I'll never forgive you. And I was like, all right, dude, love you, good luck in life. <laughs> uh, <sighs> so overall, big win for celebrity streamers. Yes, I think so. I I think it's something that it's an easy like way to make money if you're already a celebrity. Well, that too. Yeah. And it's probably a lot more relaxing than having to get into makeup and be on stage for, you know, 24 hours a day or whatever they fucking do. But see, that that also brings up another point is I feel like the celebrities that are there are still going to be acting because yeah. Bruh, hold they, up. And they're, you can't even you can't even say the makeup because girls on Twitch, they fucking. You should see my they makeup. do some makeup. You should see right, me. but they're not going to have to <laughs> sit in a chair with 13 makeup artists around them making sure their contour is exactly perfect for this exact lighting that they're going to be in. Oh, right. I mean, a lot of them do already by themselves, so I don't... Yeah. That, that one's a little like, well, you know... People Just imagine Henry Cavill dressing up as Geralt playing The Witcher 3. That My favorite thing about Henry Cavill is <laughs> <laughs> like, so like that he's played The Witcher 3. That's a good thing, yeah. Well, it's like when Vin Diesel did the D&D thing. 
with uh, I think he did it with Matt Mercer and them. But yeah, he, like people were flipping out because they're like, Dude, I didn't even know you, Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, they did a whole like D and D D and Diesel, I think is what they called yeah, it. But uh, fucking it called... Matt Mercer created a class for him. It was called oh. celebrity sub celebrity D and D or something. That's like a, that. Is that the episode that fucking Big Show was on? No, that's another thing. No, Big Show is part of uh, Joe Magnolia's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group. Yeah, they have. He, he has an actual like D and D group that meets. Oh, I does think. he actually play with them a lot? Oh, yeah. yeah. He DMs with a bunch of uh, like Vince Vaughn. Oh, Big, the Show. Big Show DMs. Oh, God, Joe does. No, no, no. Yeah, no Joe, Joe Magnolia DMs a He's group hot. of like celebrities. He and... has like the Big Show, Vince Vaughn, and a couple other people, and he runs his own group. Yeah, actually, super cool. Right, I know him. I only know him from Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Shit like that is cool as fuck because of the fact that like you would not ever think Big I, Show, this tower of a man, <laughs> would be rolling a fucking D20 and be like, does 20 hit? I bet he, <laughs> I bet the motherfucker plays like a halfling. Or like I a, hope he plays. Probably. Like a, he's like a fucking girl. halfling druid. <laughs> a, a female halfling druid. Yes. And he's all about like, I want to go pick that flower. <laughs> Yeah, I would love that. That would be D&D. so cool. Yeah. Well, so, like, fucking Devin over here is a tortle. Who got belligerently drunk. Belligerently. He was about to fight 30 guards, one of them which was psychic, apparently. That's awesome. I was getting into it. I had and then to- at the end of the episode, man was like, I was really hoping you were going to stop me because I was not. <laughs> I, I do have a quick. While we're on the topic of D and D, let's <laughs> let's just get this out in the air. Snow, Jerry, Snow. Snow, what is your issue with D and D? I don't have an issue. I just don't play why, it. Why? Why? Like it, it's literally everything that we love, and you just like refuse to play it. I have I have why? other things that I have to take care of. Okay. He has kids, Caleb. Well, let me ask I you this, kids, Devin. <laughs> let me ask you this. Would you play it? If I had the time, because I've literally tried to get him in my group. I'm no, like, okay, like, get no, part of my story. no, no, and he's like, no, D and D's for losers. Okay, <laughs> don't put things in my mouth. I can right. see you saying that, though. Actually, I think you did on this podcast. It's yes. not anime. Okay, I'm an adult. All right, I I could play D and D if I want to. Okay, I think you should, even if it's like coming on for a one shot somewhere. I don't care. I, I you think know? you'd have a lot more fun on it than you imagine you would. Here's yeah. the thing: because I, I, the same thing with my boss. Like, my boss loves the fantasy and all this other stuff, but it's like, hey, why don't you play D and D? Eh, well, that's kind of dumb. Like, why? <laughs> you play video games. You're into fantasy. Literally, you just become that character. But he refuses to do it because it's. I, I think it's probably like a pride thing where he just. He doesn't want to lose that manliness about yeah. him, I guess. It, he just doesn't want to seem like a dork, in a sense. Oh because God. if you think about it, back He's in the day... A fucking loser, then. <laughs> yeah, so like back in the day, you tell somebody, oh, I play D&D. Ha ha ha, you're a loser. I think he still has that mindset. And, well, now he's just actually a loser because he can't... Yeah. Fight- there's that, and there is still to this day the stigma of D and D as a satanic ritual thing. No, I love Satan. Satan. Nobody, are, dude, trust nobody. Me. No, no. That. There is more people that you think that will look at D and D and go, "Oh, that's a devil's game." Bro, you got to get out. I the love Satan. The children of the corn people. Yeah, you got to <laughs> get out. <laughs> no, it's not even me. Like there was just a documentary on it not too long ago where they were talking to people about it, and they're like. We still get like game stores, still get calls from churches being like, "You guys need to stop selling that devil game." Is this... I don't nobody go to church anymore, so weird ass white people. Is this so... the same people that are uh, the Christians against Slipknot too? Probably. Oh the Joe Mangelello or whatever. Slip, fuck Slipknot fuck. is a very Christian band. Fucking, I saw I saw a video of him showing off his game room. Yeah, dude, that shit's dope. Dude, his table that he uses for D anD D is. Amazing. Right. It looks like a fucking. It looks like if you took like a tavern, an old tavern, yeah, and put a long table to play D and D. I thought one. about. I thought about buying one of those tables, but I don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> Dude, they're so big. Right, like, right I, 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 I looked. So I looked here. into them. They're eight hundred dollars for a good one because um, they're a table, but they obviously like concave in. So, like, when you do your stuff, stuff's not flying all over the place. And then, like, each seat has, like, a drawer 
where you can roll your dice and hold your figures and has like drinks and stuff. Or you can get a table that has like a TV top to where you can yeah. use like battle maps. Um, that would be amazing. Dude, if I was so into d and I would try to get one if, of those, but they're so kid, expensive. If the kid didn't use the sunroom as like a second room. I oh my God, that. Devin, if you had a and d room, I, I would drive <laughs> four hours every time we played. My sunroom is so perfect. It's just, it's the kid's other bedroom though. So <laughs> even, even Cody's kitchen where he has controllable lights with yep. his phone. That's yep. so cool. We played, I did a one shot. I, I DM'd, I DM'd a one shot where, for Devin and Johnny and uh, Michael White was there, I think. Yeah. Was that, was, and Brittany. Yeah. Um, in Devin's kitchen. And it worked like that table, just that table itself worked out great. Yeah. I have a plastic card table that I use. Um, yeah, you do. I bought one. I've All never right. DM. I've never hosted D and D at my house, so I. Uh, but yeah, we oh, did. Your mom, your mom. I would love for Snow to play with us. I don't know why you're trying to call me out on something that doesn't need to be called out on. I just, I'm I just, just want to say. Oh, like when someone gets outed for not liking certain covers. Okay, that's know, just a stupid up. opinion. Just be quiet. <laughs> well, you not liking D and D is a stupid opinion. I never said I didn't like it. He said he's an adult and he doesn't have time. That is, we're all adults that don't have time. For I got feelings. I just, I, I want to say, if Jacob were to try and host D and D at his house, we would not be allowed in. He would. <laughs> no, no matter, no matter if it was COVID or not, I would be, I would be allowed in. Yeah, <laughs> just. Kidding. But the others, she'd be like, hmm, "There's too many people in my house." <laughs> Most ran a D and D game at my work. Nice. Hey, we can fucking run it there. Don't nobody come in the store. And I got that big ass bar to, we could play at. Actually, no, I would not want to play D and D at your store because that one fucking <laughs> guy. Devin <laughs> came to see me at work one time, and everything that like you don't want to see, you saw. Fucking right. neckbeard with a fedora and a trench coat. I, he's not even the one I was talking about. I was talking about that big ass dude who always hops in. Fucking, we used to play together when I'd get home from work early. On yeah, PlayStation. oh, Cameron. Yeah, that dude's it, fucking annoying. He doesn't work with me anymore. Oh my fucking god, dude. Also, if you listen to this podcast, sorry. Fuck him. I don't care. <laughs> he'd hop in he'd hop in the fucking chat or the whatever party chats with us and be like, I know you hate me, Devin. Because <laughs> I just wouldn't I don't know. I and didn't say I was like, mean to I don't him. hate you. Why well, can't be like yeah, fuck I mean, you, dude? What you're yeah, saying, literally, you literally wish you could erase this guy from your memory, <clears throat> dude. <Ooh>. Segway. <laughs> what? Snow, take it away. Well, I didn't even. Hear you already did. Segue. Yeah, you literally. Saying, you you're... did the segue, and then it was like, all right, Snow, do the segue. <laughs> <laughs> I stole a thunder. I was saying, so you wish you could erase this guy from your memory, and then speaking of memory wipes, let's go. Do 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 do. The games. <laughs> That you would like to erase from your memory and play over and over again. Take Thank it away you, there, Marty. <laughs> Thank you, Beast. No, I was waiting for Katana to do that, but he didn't want to. So if you could erase one game from your memory and play one? it over fresh. No, not one. If you could, you know, one game in general. If you could, a game, mini game, multiple games, we'll get into it. I kind of wanted to deviate away from the normal path we've been talking about in every episode. So no Witcher, no God of War, no Metal Gear Solid, no uh, Pokemon, Kingdom Hearts, no Kingdom Hearts 2. No, because we're going to start off with no Pokemon. Pokemon. No. <laughs> if I can't talk about the Witcher, you can't talk about Pokemon. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. What? I was talking about a Pokemon game we haven't even talked about yet. It's, it's <laughs> all general. So no Pokemon. Pokemon Silver. Uh, okay. <laughs> So let, let's so, make it we can't choose our favorite game let's i didn't I, obviously I a, I obviously right we here. would all choose our favorite game i wouldn't no no that's why i said i want to deviate away from that path because we talk about the witcher literally every episode because cody's a bastard uh <laughs> you're a bastard caleb <laughs> and hey, I can play it whatever else that. Play. this is so, why i need caleb on the podcast so i'm not the only one so hey, i'm just gonna start off with it the out of the games I wrote down, I'll just start with the top one on my list. The first one I wrote down was the Force Unleashed Two. Yes, it's a good one. Or no. just the series. Mm-hmm. Mm. The series is very good. I have the first game on PS2, but so I played the second one first, and I loved it so much that I went back and looked for the first one, and I bought it on PS2 before I knew it came out on PS3. 
So I fucked around and accidentally saw what it looked like on PS3, and I decided I was never going to play the first one on PS2. So that's where I'm at with that one, because it looked awful compared to PS3. But no, so I played The Force Unleashed 2 for the first time, and uh, uh, I don't know, 2010 or 11, maybe. I don't know when it came out. It's not a super long game, but it's fucking fun the whole time. Uh, you're and you get to play light or dark side. I believe I played the light side because Darth Vader did not kill me at the end. So if there's a Star Wars game, uh, you probably don't know a lot about. I would recommend it. Like it just starts off like <clears throat> really hot and heavy, a lot of shit to do because uh, it's short. So, I mean, that's my first one. If I could just forget about it and then jump back into it. It's a good, it's a good place to start. I can get behind that. And fucking your name is <clears throat> Star Killer. Star Killer. <laughs> and the thing about Star Killer, too, he also looks like the dude from Infamous One. You sure mm-hmm. does. I, when I first saw it, I was like, yo, are they just like the same man in different universes? Could but be. no. Could fun be. fact, or fun <laughs> Easter egg, I suppose. The Force Awakens. Star Killer base throwback to Star Killer from Force yep. Unleashed. I thought about saying that too, but I was like, "Nah, that's too fresh." What about what about you, Jacob? Uh, a couple. The first one that I would like to to say is The Legend of Zelda. Uh, yeah, see, I put time. I put that down on that's down on my list too. That game was like revolutionary for me. I so, don't know, so I want I say that, but like. I don't know if I played it today, if it would still make me feel the same way that if then when I played it the first time. You know what I mean? So I used to play that game <clears throat> uh, almost every day when I would go to my grandpa and grandma's house. Uh, like I'd play it religiously every day, and I don't I don't know how I beat it, but I I did. I have literally no idea how because I was a small child, <laughs> and I, like it's just a super fun memory, super fun. Call any pony to you all the time, fun. Mm-hmm. Corky Village. I love it all. Especially in hindsight. And I played it back in like 2014 or something. 20, 2013 or 14 I've replayed it. Yeah. It, it's still pretty fun. Way yeah, better. Play- way better than the first two that Cody liked. I played it recently. Uh, probably like six or seven months ago. And it's still fun. The Water Temple still makes me want to fucking die. But <laughs> it's still great. I put... Great. And uh, just piggybacking off that, I if I had an honorable mention, which I, I could have because I wrote down a bunch of games, Majora's Mask Ooh. is amazing. Majora's yeah. Mask is an amazing game, and it doesn't get enough love that it deserves. My honorable mention is The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. I mean, you don't have to have an honorable mention. It's just, I know. I, 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 I also want to play through <clears throat> Oblivion. If I could play through another game for the first time, I'd be Oblivion. What about what about Cody? What controversial? This one's about the Hades. No, right. So Animal Crossing. Are we talking about like any? If, any? Well, no, no, no. My my question is: Are are we reliving the same memories that we got with the game? I mean, not yes. necessarily, but in a sense, of, yeah. yes. Just like if you could. You know, forget a game and play it again. What game would you want that to be to feel basically the same thing you felt before because it was such an amazing feeling? Okay, good. So I don't have to start crying on the podcast. So, crying. Uh, yeah. We are, uh, me, me and Jake already almost did. Snow might have too, but. All right, fine. Know. So if we're reliving exactly why the reason the game is close to us, it would have to be Spyro. Um, and the reason that is. I'm with that. <clears throat> well, the reason that it is, is because. When I was a kid, my me and my mom grew up like super close. I lost her when I was like 23. But um, who anyway, for whatever reason, she always was like not into games, but she like had to watch me play them. So she was always interested. She was the type of mom that would just ask me questions. She wanted me whether she understood what she was talking about or not. She wanted to hear me talk about it because she knew how happy I was about it. Right. And one of these times I went out to go to the fair because it's all you can fucking do in Mount Gilead. But before I left, she was like, hey, 
the spiral game looks cool. I love how cute the little purple dragon is. Teach me how to jump. <laughs> like, show me <laughs> what buttons to do to jump. Okay. And I come back like 10 hours later. She is fucking grinding Spyro. She has sat there the entire time and has done nothing but play Spyro. That's awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, Mom, are you like actually playing a video game? She's like, it's just so fun. Like, I don't like killing the sheep, but it's cool to collect a <laughs> little gem. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. So, That's yeah. Awesome. So that would be it for me if we're talking about that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, to just completely erase and start over, it would probably be Binding of Isaac or Knights of the Old Republic. I still need to play that game. So do I. You haven't played Which Knights? One? No. Wasn't uh, it a computer? It was a computer game, right? They had it on the Xbox. Oh, I was going to say, because it was, I heard about it on PC, and it's just apparently the best Star Wars game, and I just have never played it. It was one of those things you could actually make your own story, which was one of the few times in around that time that you could, and you could make your own lightsabers and change the colors and like just that's awesome, all, all kinds of cool shit. I mean, yeah. I've never played it. Yeah, I want to play it. I mean, I haven't, but I have wanted to. There's supposed to have been a new one for the past like twelve years. Yeah, I've, oh, I've heard that. That they I've been waiting on making it. <clears throat> I've been waiting on this anthem update for <laughs> never going to come out six months uh, to make the game, you know. Playable. playable fun what about you caleb well my original answer was pokemon gold or silver but yeah you know. <laughs> let's no fuck it let's we can talk about that and then it's, it's all right it. it's all right because I, I do like getting off the beaten path of our normal um Same honestly way. i might say dead space really because <laughs> it was the first horror adventure game I'd play it, I guess, if you want to consider it horror. But it's definitely a horror game, yeah. Yeah. But I remember being too scared to buy it because I was like, man, I need something new to play. And the guy at GameStop was like, yo, you, you should check out Dead Space. And I was like, eh, not into horror games. He goes, I promise, play it, you'll love it. So I was like, all right, cool. Checked it out. <laughs> I have beat that game three times just because, like, I don't know, the story in it was so good. I've never played Dead Space. And the adrenaline you get from playing it because you don't know what's around the next corner <laughs> was so good. And the creatures in that game. I don't know. Overall, that just had a great story. I think I played the first one. I didn't play any of the other ones. The and I didn't even were okay, the but the first one was top tier. Right. Or I would probably say Fallout 3. Hmm. That was, one of, that was one of my picks too. Because Fallout 3 that was good. that was the first uh, open world RPG that I played because I'd never heard about like Fallout or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And my Cody, Levi, and all all those guys were like, "Yo, you should check out Fallout 3. And I put so much time into that game, mm -hmm. just and literally just exploring in the post apocalyptic world. It's just so fascinating. Yeah, I think my intro to that was uh, Morrowind. Mm. Morrowind's fuck. I've never played Morrowind, but I've watched videos of it. It looks fun. Oh, yeah, it was cool. I was a Khajiit, and I was like, this is fucking cool. I'm a <laughs> Khajiit rogue. <laughs> I love Khajiit. I, I remember trying to play uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, because mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh, this game's amazing. You should try it out. It plays just like Fallout. I'm like, all right, cool. I get out of the dungeon, and I make my way to this first town, and people try to kill me. And I'm like, what, what the hell's going on? I didn't do anything. I literally just walked into town. They're like, we don't like you. And they try to kill me. They end up killing me because you don't have any gear. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to go this way. Make it to another town. Same shit happened. This town just randomly starts trying to kill me. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on with this game? And never played it again. <laughs> and our buddy like Levi was like, yo, like, did you fight anybody? I said, I literally walked into the town. And he goes, well, what was your class? I said, I was a dark elf. And he goes, well, that might have been your problem. <laughs> that was definitely your problem. Did not realize that the race and class of your character actually affected the game. At yeah, the end. which is cool as fuck. Yeah, because basically you were the devil that just decided to walk into wherever. Yeah, two towns I walked into, got killed both times. And I was like, yeah. yo, I just wanted to explore. And they both killed me. And I said, I'm done with this. And then played and had the hardest time trying to get like talk myself into buying Skyrim because I was like, it's going to be the exact same thing. And it was, it was not your class no, no. and race. You can be, the yeah, your class and race it. Skyrim. Yeah. Your class and race didn't matter in that Unless game. Unless you fucking try to kill that chicken. 
<laughs> yeah. Yo, I got bombarded by a horde of chickens in Valhalla the other day. <laughs> I accidentally smacked a chicken, and next thing I know, there are 17 chickens fighting me. I, in, I love that that was an original like Zelda thing, and then everyone else has just adopted it. Yep. Speaking of Zelda, Snow, what game would you like to erase from your memory and play all over again, buddy? Um, it's it's really hard coming up with some games. <clears throat> but if he doesn't yeah. say what I think he says, I'm. I have, sad. I have plenty on the list. We'll we'll go through some more after. Um, I, have, I, have, I have three more. As well. There was there was only one that came up in my head right as soon as you asked that question, but I, I have since came up with a couple more. Okay. Go but, on, uh, go on. but the first we'll one was uh, Red Dead 2. Ooh. Ooh was not expecting I, that. <clears throat> I felt that coming from you. I, I don't know. I just got lost in the story and, you know, all of it. Yeah, that's um, one of my favorite games of the generation for sure. Destiny would be uh, another one. Fuck. Another one would be um, way back when uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Yo, that, that game, game was good. I have the I have the first two or yeah, I have the first two Lord of the Rings games and I cannot find that one. I uh, wanted to uh, play co-op with that with Snow in that game so bad, but he know. never wanted to play it with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. And another one that I had was oh Max God. Payne. Ooh, I okay. fucking forgot about Max Payne. Max I Payne fuck with good. that B Snow. B Snow, I fuck with that choice. Mm. No, you yeah. have good picks, brother. Those oh, are just you know, several. You know what? Speaking of Max Payne, Mac, that reminded me how much fucking fun I had playing uh, True Crimes LA. Man, that game was dope as fuck, too. Uh, dude, I could yeah. not beat the end. I, <laughs> you had to fight that Korean dude or whatever. Or whatever Asian race he was. I don't know. I'm sorry, but I think it was Korean. <laughs> I could not fucking beat him. I tried so many times when I was a kid. You, you know what game I couldn't beat? Fucking LA Noir. <laughs> I never. Dude, played. that game was so hard. Love that game. The, the ending when you did you guys beat it? Yeah. No, <laughs> I got, I couldn't get past the first lie. Beat it the first. No, so, the first uh, when it first released. Yeah. You remember when you're chasing fucking uh, the Black Dahlia murderer through the sewers? Yes, yes, I yes. I couldn't get past that. What a game! And it's so good. Do you guys I, remember? Yeah, I oh I do have another one. Um, that okay. just popped in my. CT brain, um, Star <laughs> Wars Revenge of the No, was it the third Star Wars game? Revenge, yeah, of, Sith. Re Revenge, Revenge of the Sith, Sith. yeah, that was one. that fun? That's yeah, fun. dude, that yeah. game was yeah, so it was fun. Really it actually good. had like oh. a multiplayer versus battle, and it had a secret ending where you played as Anakin and beat Obi Wan. Oh, no, shit. yeah, yeah. so you, you beat the game, you could go back and play the last mission as Anakin, you beat Obi Wan, and the emperor comes down. He's like, yeah, yes, we will rule the galaxy. And Anakin cuts him in half. And he says, no, this is my galaxy. And just takes off in his spaceship. That's dope as fuck. Right? Yeah. I remember that game. I played the shit out of that game on the original Xbox. I never played it because I tried to play episode one. It was on PlayStation. Like PlayStation 1 or whatever. I have Revenge of the Sith. I it. I'm pretty sure I still have that game. It's nice. on PS2. It. It's good. Hold on. We got to take a break because I have to go look real quick. <laughs> I'll be I, back in a second. I honestly would like to play Fallen Order again. Oh, yeah. Fallen Order was Fallen great. Order, fuck. I want to say one of the Spider-Man. I want to say it was either Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man 3. It was actually like a ton of fun. Spider-Man 2 was for me. It was, it was awesome. I, maybe that's what it was. Which but, one? Spider-Man 2, like the actual movie game, but it was nothing like the movie. <laughs> I mean, the most recent Spider-Man that just came out, I wouldn't mind playing through that the first time again. That's not one of the ones on my list. Nah. Um, good, Splinter Cell Double Agent would be a good replay, too. I was wondering about Splinter Cell. Splinter uh, Cell Double Cell? That shit was good. Yeah, I, I'd say Double Agent was probably my favorite. Because you yeah. literally got to choose whether or not you were a good guy or bad guy. Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. Because yeah. that so, was when he started kind of like going off the grid. So you try to leave the third echelon and you're, you're playing a double agent against these bad guys, but you could choose like the choices you made decided like you were basically staying neutral. You were leading more towards the third echelon or you were leading towards the bad guys. And there are some choices in that fucking game where it's like, do I want to do this? Yeah. And it's like, this makes or break 
like you either are a bad guy or a good guy after this decision. And you just know, having to make those decisions were dope. Speaking of GameStop player, like GameStop employees. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Devin, when I come when I come back, we're gonna play through that, right? I'm down. Bet. Uh, speaking of GameStop employees, just fucking telling you a game to play and you getting it without even thinking about like or whatever. Mafia Two that happened to me. I never played really? Mafia One, and I went into GameStop once and I was like, I'm I don't have a game to play. I need something new to play. He was like, you played Mafia Two. I said no. Played it. Fucking loved it. See, sometimes they know what they're talking about. Yeah, because, I mean, they literally have nothing other than <laughs> right? play games and tell you about them. That was dirt for me. I was just looking. For uh, hey, Cody. I fucking love dirt. Yeah, dude, I would have never picked it up, but uh, some dude that I talk actually were like I would say kind of friends with now, but I haven't been to GameStop in forever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was talking to him. I was like, "Man, why isn't there any like good racing games anymore?" He's like, "Well, dude, Dirt just came out. That's pretty cool if you like the rally type of stuff." And I was like, "Ah, eh, I don't really know anything about rally. Like, just give it a shot, dude." And I tried it, and I'm like, "Fuck yeah, hell yeah!" So the thing about dirt for me, like, I just came home one day, and my dad had bought dirt. <laughs> My dad had bought Dirt, Metal Gear Solid 4, and maybe a couple other games. So, like, my, he got me a good fucking haul for no reason. Nicest thing he's ever done. Dirt, dirt, super yeah. fun. Dirt it is. Super fun. Uh, another game for me that I would like to replay, I'm going to switch it up and then Devin, you can go again. But I got two more after this. Three more after this. Uh, <laughs> Tony Hawk's Underground 1. I also have that now. No, two. You, you I, I, like, two. I liked one better. I like you got to go with two with the no. jackass crew. And no, no, listen, basically, that's, uh, that's the exact reason I don't want to play through two again. Because I like, I like jackass, but I was a skateboarder. And I liked playing through the skateboarding storyline. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. So I have Tony Hawk Underground 1 on my list, too. Because, and... I have it on my list because, like, it just felt super revolutionary to me at the time. Like, being able to hop off your board mm-hmm. and do shit like that. Uh, mm-hmm. New Jersey in the beginning. Shit, I don't know. It's just, it's stuck and then with New York me. right afterwards. And it just felt, um, like, amazing when I played it. But I do like Tony Hawk Underground 2 more. I like Tony, Under- uh, Tony Hawk Underground 2 for what it was. But for me, it wasn't, like... I don't know. I liked the, the skateboarding storyline. I liked going from amateur skateboarder to pro skateboarder. Yeah. Oh, I get that. I'm with you there. I just see at I think the time what I what I really like enjoyed about Tony Hawk Underground Two is that it was just fucking wild. It, <laughs> it was, was wild. It was fucking wild. That and was. Viva La Bam was out at that time, so obviously, and, uh, yeah, if you were you, a fan of Viva La Bam and playing Tony Hawk Underground Two, like I didn't fucking, have cable, so I never got to watch Viva La Bam. Fucking, Jake knows how much I love Bam, so. Yeah. Which is so funny because I was thinking about doing a topic of games you want to see like remade or remastered. Tony Hawk Underground 1 and 2 were both on there. And the Force Unleashed 1 and 2 were both on my list. <laughs> yep. So yeah, the I, fact I, that we want to play them again is absolutely amazing. Hilarious. You know, I fucking... If they... I'd also like to see Ocarina of Time re, uh, remade. Ooh, oh, like yeah. 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 Yeah, that'd be nice. They just remade it though, so or I, made, like ten years ago. Let's put it. Well, they uh they put it on the 3ds, but they gave it the 3d option. They they remade it. No, they didn't remake Ocarina of Time. No, the graphics are far better than they were on. Fine. Okay, maybe like a touch up, a remaster, or whatever, but it's not remade. Oh, you want to? Oh, okay. You like want a Final Fantasy VII remake? Not not quite that remade where it's so fucking big and powerful. It has to be on twelve discs. <laughs> you can only you can only play twelve minutes of gameplay on one disc. Yeah, no, but okay. So another one I have, and it's a super fun memory for me because me and Tyra played it together, and Tyron just called me up out of the blue one day. He was like, "Dude, you have to come over and play SmackDown. Shut your mouth." <laughs> Devin, it's new. Devin, what? That was on my fucking list too. That's we're best friends. <laughs> I fucking love so, such a problem. So Tyron calls me up, and I don't. Whenever it came out, whatever year it came out, it was that year. He said, "Dude, hop on your bike, come to the crib." So I show, I pull up, I pull up on my mongoose or diamondback or whatever it was, run up in the house, and it's playing all that shit. You know, uh, like you're going through the menus and it's playing like actual videos and stuff. Yep. And we just fucking get active. So we're doing this match. Uh, I was NWO Shawn Michaels when I first nice. played. I don't remember who he was, but we were we did a Hell in a Cell match, I think, 
and Booker T was one of the people in the match that we were <laughs> fighting against. So, uh, Booker T was beating the shit out of Tyron in this game. Like, beating the fuck out of him in this match. So, he's like, okay, after this match, I'm just wrestling Booker T in a singles match. Like, he was like, you can't fucking play this game until I beat Booker T one on one. That shit was so fun. Just, that was like, a good day. It was seeing that game new. I don't know. I don't know what why that did it for me, but I was like, that day, I was like, this is fucking amazing. I, I did like the so SmackDown happy. versus Raw's a whole lot too. I like SmackDown. 07 Raw. was the I like, best one. I don't. I like 07, but I like it less than O or the first one because it didn't have Jericho in it. It didn't have right. Christian. Maybe uh, Eddie Guerrero. I don't think was in it. Eddie was definitely in it. Oh seven, he was dead. So yes, he was definitely in it. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I don't. He was know. a remarkable character, but I'm no Kurt. Sure. No Kurt Angle wasn't in it. He was busy doing. Yeah, I know. Kurt Kurt so My next yeah. game is a uh, GTA San Andreas. I didn't have that. I Dude. never played that. Yeah. I, was good well, the, I never I had a PlayStation. It. I liked it. it just it had, wasn't. It had multiplayer in it, like. The, hey, the, you know, fucking playing two player in that game really was amazing. It was fun as fuck. And like, if you ate too much, you got fat. If you went to the gym too much, you bulked up. Like, there was just so many nuanced things in that game. If you wore a certain color into a certain part of the game, you got shot at. Like, there was just certain things about that game yeah. that, like, it, it, was, it was fantastic. It's pr- it's still to this day probably considered one of the best GTA games that ever came out. And oh, it's I, funny because I care the least about the storyline in that one just because, like, so much of the other parts of the gameplay mattered. That right. story was so funny. I don't I mean, care. Yeah, the story, even the story was funny as fuck. Right. But, like, that was the part that I liked least about the game because just of the, like, all right, well, if you don't start running instead of riding your bike everywhere, you're going to get fat. Stream GTA San Andreas. Do you have any more, Cody? Um... I mean, we've talked about it before, but probably Halo 2. Nah, uh, yeah, we can't talk about that. We gotta... That's, that's I, I want to say Halo's Donkey Kong game. Country 2. Ooh, okay. Fucking okay. <laughs> All right, I mean, if we're going that route, Super Mario like, World... Is hey, actually, uh, Donkey Kong 64... That game was fun. I got two more after this. Donkey Kong Country 2, where you played as Diddy? Yeah. And you had to rescue Donkey Kong. I had so much fun because that's when I was starting to get to an age where I was understanding video games and was actually getting decent at them. And I don't know what it is about that game that sticks to my memory, but that goddamn, I want to play that game so bad. Yeah, I I never really, I didn't have a a sixty four or anything like that after the time when I played uh, when I played Zelda. It was my uncle sixty four. And then when he moved out, I didn't have one. I had a PlayStation, so I didn't get a chance to like play through Donkey Kong 64 and all that stuff. Yeah, I went from Super Nintendo to a huge gap to the GameCube. So I didn't have the 64. I was never allowed. I went from 64 to PlayStation 1, and then my dad moved out. I didn't have anything for like a year or two, and then I got the PS- my mom got me the PS2. Okay, so... Uh, PS2, Xbox 360, PS4. There's one that... Uh, it's more for memories again, but it's just every time I went to my grandma's, I played this with my uncle. But it's Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball on the Super Nintendo. Nice. I have... I, mean, I, I still have that go, somewhere, actually. I could go through a lot of 64 games just because like, I remember playing them at my grandpa's house. Right. I, I, I want to play Kirby's Dream Course again. So, or not Grid Dream Course. That's one of them, but the... I want to play Mario Golf with Snow again. <laughs> Mario Golf is so fun. <laughs> hey, fucking I didn't... Mario Tennis on sixty four. Yeah, dude, me yeah. and me and Snow used to fuck with Mario Golf on the GameCube. You know, fucking, uh, have you played Mario Strikers on the GameCube? <laughs> the baseball? No, no soccer. No. That shit soccer. is amazing. I love that game with my whole heart. <laughs> Sluggers was the uh, uh, baseball one. Gotcha. So, you guys, you guys like Dynasty Warriors? Anybody? No. Oh, yeah. yeah, I played it. Absolutely. All right, fuck okay. with Dynasty Warriors. So, dude. my favorite Dynasty Warriors game of all time is Dynasty Warriors Gundam Two. Okay. Uh, Gundam. Okay. So, me and Derek played the demo of Dynasty Warriors Gundam on his uh, 
he like got a free demo on his Xbox. It may have been, I yeah. think it was his 360. And we played, <clears throat> we played the fuck out of that demo, like nonstop. So I, I don't know how I found it, but I somehow found Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2. I put like, <clears throat> I probably should have talked about this when we talked about how many hours we put into games. <laughs> but like, it's, I don't think it's even documented, but I put like hundreds of hours into that game. There was so much to do and unlock. Like, I know there is for Dynasty Warriors games because shit's just like, there's so, not a lot to there's not a lot to do, but there's a lot to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, dude, that shit is so fun. I w- I I really wish I could play that over from fucking fresh memory. Huh. So I guess mine's actually more Samurai Warriors because the main reason I played those games is because of Hanzo Hattori. My next one. My next one. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Three. Ah, uh, see, I put I put Budokai Tenkaichi and I put Raging Blast Two. Raging Blast Two is my favorite game of all time, or really? my favorite. My favorite Dragon Ball Z game. Okay. I had so much fun on that game, and I played it so much that I was ranked number one in the world the last time I played it. I never had... I didn't, I didn't get Tenkaichi. I, I got Tenkaichi 2, but I don't know. I like Budokai 3 more. Three more. Just just Budokai 3, not Budokai Tenkaichi 3? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I'm I mean, like... You know, I'm not, I'm not like a big Dragon Ball Z guy or anything like uh, that, but like when I'd see him and I'd play him, they were fun. Um, and then my last one. This is going to upset Devin, I bet. <laughs> Probably upset, I don't know. Uh, RuneScape. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't care about RuneScape, but I remember the first and only time I played RuneScape. I just, so. I put so much, like, that was the first game that I feel like I got lost in. You know what I, I mean? Brittany loves RuneScape. Like, RuneScape's good. I have fond memories of it, and I remember, like, that was, it was the first time I ever played a game on a computer. It was like, I don't know. It was just, it was great. And then honorable mention Frogger. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Have you played the new Frogger? I haven't. That shit's still fun. Is, Is it? it? <laughs> yeah. Is it? You go really to an good. arcade and it's still fun. That was like one of the, that, like how Cody has his, like for memories and stuff like that. Frogger was like, I'd go to my great grandma's house and my, my aunt had a PS1 there and. The only game she'd let me play is Frogger because the only other game she had was like Final Fantasy VII and that was five. So yeah. funny. And, and then one time I tried to play Final Fantasy VII, I got caught at the reactor and couldn't beat the first boss. Deleted your dad's save file. Deleted my dad's save file and I threw the controller through the TV and they said they were yeah. never playing the game again. <laughs> Sounds like Caleb. So Frogger it was. Yeah. And Frogger so- was fun as fuck. I remember there was one on, um, it was like a Frogger Adventures on I think PS1. Or PS2, something like that, but it was fun as hell. You've you actually, actually worlds. Y'all know whatever the games I fucked with? I got one more, sorry. The Ratchet and Clank games. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about the new one yet. Oh, it's so good. And Sly Cooper, so fucking good. Sly Cooper was good. Back when games were simple. Right. Right. You got any more? Goldeneye. I, I mean, used to play, I, me and Tyron used to play Goldeneye a lot too. We used to fucking go in on Goldeneye. I love me and, Tyron, me and Tyron have been friends for too long. What about fucking Hitman? Like I never played play. Hitman. Never. never. Never played Hitman. Y'all need to play Hitman Blood Money. That shit was dope. I heard I, the newest one for the last gen was really good, too. Yeah, it was really good. But Blood Money, it's it's very simplistic. And it's a lot more, you take a contract, you go do the contract. You know what I mean? It's not. There's not right. a whole lot of story to it. It's just, you go fucking be a Hitman. <laughs> I remember wanting to play one of the newer ones, and then I saw that you had to buy each episode, and I was like, nope, never mind. Yeah. Oh, fuck that. That's another reason why I don't fuck with the newest ones. Uh, I mean, I had one more we didn't really touch on. That was Madden 2003. That's the first Madden I played. You know, and I also (laughs) played it with Tyron. I played it with my good friend Tyron. Mine was, um, I think, what was it, 07 that Mike Vick was the... That's 04, 07. 04. Sean Alexander, you oh, ass. okay, my bad. <laughs> NFL game day, 94. Dude, I missed the 2K football game. NFL 2K was dope as fuck. You had to go into your apartment to start fucking games up. And yeah, start and you had the helmet mode. Yep. 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 So, so listen. As a running back was one of the scariest fucking experiences of my life. So, NFL Street. Uh, the thing about 2K5, mm-hmm. at least, it's it's really like I know people still play it, but it's in hindsight not that great. I'm sure it was a. It came out 15 years ago. I'm sure it wasn't. I that know great. that's what I'm saying, but like people still 
gush and come over it. Well, same right. thing with NCAA, four, NCAA football 14. It wasn't that great of a game. Until oh, the I disagree there. I by, think that game's fucking amazing. By today's standards. No, I still think it holds up. Really? The only thing that doesn't hold up are the on-field graphics. Gotcha. That's the only thing. The, and and I mean, like, the but, fucking... The loading screens are way too long. But game mechanics that, haven't really changed fun. since then. So no, they haven't changed. But I, I, it's just a very good football game. It really is. Oh, good football games. All right, well, let's talk about <laughs> NFL, NFL Quarterback Club '98. Yo, you know I uh, when the game store here was going out of out of business, I thought about picking up like a whole bunch of super old like. Uh, in 64 sports games, but I could not bring myself to do it. Because they, were just like, they were like a weird amount of money, like $5 for fucking John Madden 94 or whatever, <laughs> QB Club 97. So I didn't pull the trigger on it, but I feel like I maybe I should have. First ever football game I ever played. Now that's, I played Tecmo. That was the, first, the first football game I played. I played like my grandpa and my dad would play it all the time and I'd jump on and be terrible. Used to watch my dad and uncle play some football. I don't know what it was, though. I don't think I was ever allowed to play. First one I really remember playing is Madden 03. I feel like the the first football game I remember playing is like NFL 2K5. Like my dad, his friends used to play. Like he'd go to his friend's house and force me to come and play like Madden 97 or something. <laughs> Shit just looked awful. Ah, well, boys, it was nice. It's nice talking with you. It was a good episode, friends. Good episode, it was friends. a good episode, friends. It was a good episode, friends. Shut All up, right. Cody. Let's stick, <laughs> let's, wow. let's stick the uh, stick the buck plug in and plug away. Hey, Belle Delphine had a fucking fidget <laughs> spinner in her butthole. <laughs> That's literally all I know about her. <laughs> Devin recently discovered Belle Delphine on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw. So that's <laughs> that's so funny. That Amazing. Was enough internet for the day. All right. Well, I'm Caleb. Caleb yeah, somebody's got 44. I don't stream. I don't Twitch. I don't do I anything. Know. If I knew how, I probably would. But continue. So, I mean, somebody's got to. Sure, I'll jump in. Fine. Uh, Gingerbeard Man Gamer on Twitch and YouTube. Definitely. Friendly. Friendly plays at YouTube and Friendly Plays X on Twitter. Go follow him. He does all kinds of different fun things. He paints. He streams, he plays games, he DMs, he, he does he it all. He's a man of many talents. Give him he all your money. He's going to buy us a mansion. He doesn't fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Devin Bliss. Follow me on Twitter at SexyDeviB. On this episode of the podcast, I was protected by a river witch. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Just know that it is protected. That's all that matters. <laughs> and uh, I guess I'm the Beast Snow. You can follow me there. Uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and the Twitch, maybe. Uh, yeah. With a recently acquired green screen, apparently. I've been working on my Canadian accent, so uh, there's that. Hey. Perfect. That's, Let's hear it. That's your Canadian accent? Hey, uh, hey, hey there, Marty. Uh, we got that excavator over there and uh, digging that hole there over there. <laughs> So, uh, Wait, hey, what do you say? You want to go have a chip, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry. All right. <laughs> sorry, uh, so it's about time. You apologize. Yeah, it's uh, it's time to time to end this episode, guys. Over there, okay. Uh, well, uh, we just lost all ten of our viewers. All righty, cool. there. Uh, hail Biden, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hail Satan. Bye. 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 You guys get Bye. Don't fuck this up. Have a beautiful time. Bye. Bye.